Uh, in one case, this guy Evaristo from Peru, he got, uh, he just passed uh, a, a stop sign and he got stopped by the police and eventually get the guy spent like uh, around like five days in jail and eventually he um, he was taken to the immigration here in Hartford and then uh, they, they, he was placed on an electronic monitor, one of those um, ankle monitors and and four months later he got deported back to back, back to Peru. So the second case is, is this guy from um, from Honduras where his wife um, there was like a, a, a domestic dispute in the, in the house. Um, basically the wife and the guy got, they got detained by, uh, by the police. The wife was legal so nothing happened to her but the guy eventually got deported back to to, to Honduras knowing that the guy has like a clean record and, and he has like two kids in this country and um, you know we tried to talk to a few lawyers around the state and nothing uh, they were not able to do anything in that in that time so so this year when um, when the governor announced that the 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 the, the, the it was going to be an implementation of, through the whole state. Um, we got together in New Haven with uh, basically the most of the people, the leaders in the community, um, and there was a discussion on how this is going to be affect the the the, the whole the whole state because right now we have been seeing it in just one place in, in Connecticut, but right now it's going to affect the rest of the rest of the state. And in New Haven, for in particular, uh, the mayor and the and the leaders they decide that that we should take lead in this campaign against secure communities because, you know, we have been fighting to have a more um, uh, how do you say a, a more humane um, humane police department, even though that they behave as any other police officer and they are involved in a lot of cases of uh, uh, police brutality. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, but at, 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 at least on the relation between the, the police and the immigrant community, they have been better than any other place around uh, around the New Haven. So if the implementation of secure community is going to affect New Haven, that relationship is going to, is going to, is not, is going to destroy that, that relationship. Um, so that's why the mayor started the campaign uh, um, calling for the governor to opt out the secure communities, which is a possibility, even though, even though that I mentioned that you know the the program cannot be opt out, but if the 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 governor or a specific uh, uh, govern um, cities they decide to made the life difficult for immigration, they can do it. And there's, an, uh, and there's plenty of examples of that. Because uh, when immigration say, oh, you cannot, the, the program cannot be opt out. But there is an example in California, and in specific in, uh, in Santa Clara, um, they did it, and, they, um, and it has been pretty effective. So uh, the mayor uh, decided that in New Haven, uh, the police is not going to collaborate with immigration. Um, the local detention center in New Haven, they are not going to, uh, they are not going to, um, they are not going to collaborate with immigration. So the call was for like the governor in general, you know, to do it through all the state. Eventually, to the pressure, you know, we did like a press conference here in Hartford. In, um, in April where we brought 50 people and we approached the mayor and um, uh, I'm sorry the governor and he promised that he will, he was going to study uh, the possibility to do something about it the only thing he has been uh, that he has been uh, promised that he's going to do is the he's going to look case by case so he's not going. He's not going to prom. He did not promise that he's going to opt out completely. That, but he say, depending on the case and depending on on the charges, he's going to 
uh, he's going to keep the people in, in prison or he's going to release them, which that doesn't mean that much. And, and I think it's important, uh, it's important for, for the people to keep, more, to, uh, to, um, to keep the pressure on, on the governor. One problem that we have in Connecticut is that there is not many groups uh, organizing immigrants. Uh, I think, as I, mean, I mentioned it before, in one time, you know, we used to have the people from Danbury and we used to have a group here from Hartford and New Haven and we were pretty strong and we caused a lot of commotion and a lot of news. But many of these groups, they are not in place anymore. And I think I have been telling people that, you know, I think the only way we can really do something about secure communities is if we, um, if we start organizing the community, if we start organizing the base, and if you start doing the grassroots organization and mobilizing the community, because to, without mobilization, nothing is going to happen. And the tendency, and I feel that even the, the even uh, if um, the mayor of New Haven is pretty progressive in some, in some things, and the board of aldermen is there progressive, progressive on, on these issues, but they are, done, they are not representing the community. So we need to go educate the community, and we, to, we need to identify the leaders in, in, uh, in the communities and, and the different cities, and start creating a, a, a large uh, coalition of immigrants through the state that really uh, you know, bring the changes that we need, not just on secure communities, but anything related to what's going on in, in, in the, the area of, of immigration. Um, because it's like, for me, it's, uh, it's hard, it's sad to see it, like places like Bridgeport, places like uh, New London, places like Hartford, where there is no organizing around, around immigration. Um, so, thank you.